This all started, and I, you know what? I can't thank you enough for that beautiful tribute. It just really touched my heart. I mean, you know, thank you. I mean, this has been a tough two years for everyone, so I really do appreciate that heartfelt thanks. So, um, Steve asked me to come and talk to you because he came out of one of our group meetings, and he asked people, do you believe that miracles still happen? And I was like, absolutely they do. So um, that's what um, he asked me to speak about tonight. Uh, miracles that I've witnessed, that I've experienced, they do happen. They are real. And I looked it up in the dictionary. A miracle is a highly improbable or extraordinary event, development, or accomplishment that brings very welcome consequences. Okay, that's an okay definition, but I like this one better. A surprising and welcome event that is not explicable by nature or scientific laws and is therefore considered to be the work of a divine agency. And the agency I can go to without, but a divine God, let's shall we say. That's what it is. I'm going to preface some of these stories. These are all true stories, and I've asked every one of these people involved permission to share their stories tonight, okay? So back in 2007, we were on a ski trip, and my son, Sean, um, had an accident. I was the last run down the slope. There had been some kids on the slopes that were playing pranks, and they were actually setting booby traps for people coming down the slopes, and there had been a few accidents that day. And my son was the last one on that day. He actually came across their booby trap and went flying out of both of his skis head first. Um, he suffered what, um, an AC joint and injury, AC ligament injury. Um, the AC ligament is what attaches your arm to your to your sternum here, okay? And it allows you to move your arm up and down. He was 19 years old and, he, and it injured his dominant arm and he could only move it about this much. At 19, that's a little bit too much disability for anyone. So we got back home, we went to the surgeon and he said the only way to fix it is surgery. The AC ligament is like, I can think of a rubber band that's been stretched, stretched, and stretched too much so it no longer stretches and then it breaks. That's what had happened to his arm. So the only way they could fix it is to cut it, shorten it, reattach it. Well, the week before he was having surgery, he was just having so much pain and just really struggling with this. He got in the shower, he's like, okay, God, I'm done with this pain. This arm is yours, this pain is yours. Do what you want with it. He said the pain went away immediately. But what was even more remarkable is he came running down the hallway and going, mom, mom, look at this, look at this. His arm was completely healed. We went back to the doctor because he was supposed to go for his pre-surgical appointment. And the doctor said, I don't need to see you. You're scheduled for surgery tomorrow. I said, no, you need to see this. He comes in there and he goes like, what, what's going on? Is there something wrong? He goes, no, look at this. And the doctor just looks at him and goes, that's impossible. That is the only way to fix that is through surgery. So I, I don't know what you do. What, what did you do? He said, I prayed. I gave it to God. And God fixed it. And the doctor said, well, keep doing what you're doing because obviously that works. <laughs> a few years back, I had a patient in the ICU who um, had a really severe abdominal infection. Um, he had had multiple surgeries and he was, had this septic shock. We were in rounds one day and I felt God prompting me to go into this man's room, lay my hand on his belly and pray for him. I'm like, really, God? You're kidding me, right? I was like, I'd be lying to say if I didn't think that was a little awkward because I was like, okay, this man is on life support. He's sedated. I'm like going in the room and I'm talking like, okay, I don't know you. You don't know me, but God's telling me to put my hands in your belly and pray for you. So here we go. So, and, and the other nurse that was outside is going like, everything okay? And I'm like, yeah, we're, we're good. <laughs> we're good. And I just prayed for this man. No expectation of what was going to happen. Just, you know, walked out after praying and didn't think anything of it. The next day we're in rounds and this man had made a turnaround. All of a sudden he wasn't needing the medications that were keeping his blood pressure up. His infection numbers were improving. He was starting to wake up. And a couple days later, his wife says to me, there's a miracle that happened in this room. Something has changed in this room. I don't know what it is, but I felt it when I came in here the other day. So I shared the story how God prompted me to lay my hands on him and pray for him. That man made a full recovery. And his wife asked me to share the story with him while he was in the hospital. And they came back a few months later and said, so she said, I want you to tell him again. He doesn't remember all the details you share with him. So they walked back in. We, I have a picture with this gentleman and his wife. 
she's asked me to speak at her church, to tell that testimony, to share that story with people. But miracles do happen, you know. Um, I'd be remiss if I did share a COVID story. So our worship pastor, Benji, had COVID. He had a pretty severe case of COVID. Um, he was hospitalized. He was on ox oxygen for a number of months. And I just, I, along with a number of other people, felt this just really urgent need to pray for him. I didn't know Benji personally. I just, God just laid in my heart, you need to pray for him. Everywhere I went, every group that I belonged to, I said, we need to pray for Benji. We need to pray for him. I just prayed for his, not only for his healing, but that he would have no long-lasting effects from COVID, that his lungs would not have any fibrotic tissue, that his voice would come back stronger than ever, that his lungs would be stronger than ever. I'm telling you, Benji came back to church a few months later. In my opinion, he sings better now than he ever did before. Honestly, and for anybody who goes to next level, I think they all feel the same way. Doesn't he, right, Michelle? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, but that's the power of prayer. I hope you find some encouragement, um, some positivity, some hope in what I've, I've shared with you. These are true stories, and I hope you believe in miracles as I do. And thank you for listening and, and allowing me to share these stories. And thank you, Steve. Appreciate it.